So we take a tree, we cut it into sections, typically eight feet, and then we put it into a lathe and we peel it. In 1922, a man with a dream started a sawmill in rural Oregon outside of Salem. We're actually recovering way more of the log by peeling it than you would ever recover from making lumber or timber. The sawmill became a plywood plant and now engineers wood products the old timers would never have imagined possible. You know, the type of product that we're making, which is a mass timber panel specifically made out of veneer, um, it's really meant to offset steel and concrete in multi-story buildings. Tyler Freres is the grandson of the man who started the company. Over the years, the mill modernized and now produces state-of-the-art paneling that's stronger than wood, quicker to put up, and easy on the environment. You don't want to end up with a whole lot of sawdust or trim ends or anything else on a job site because here we can take that sawdust, take the trim ends, take any of the waste or drop, you know, either grind it up if it's not usable and put it to our cogen plant where we're essentially burning wood waste but creating about 10 megawatts of electricity off that wood waste. We can take an eight, eight and a half inch average block size and create, essentially unroll it like a roll of toilet paper. So we're not trying to create a square product out of a round tree. We can be much more responsible with the raw material. And then by the time we laminate that together in specific formats, we can create something that's much stronger than the lumber itself. We will specialize in uh, thinning. We can create a much healthier landscape if we're allowed to go into what is our overgrown and high mortality federal landscape and potentially thin it and create a much healthier environment out in the forest. When you engineer veneer this way, wood products can be used in new ways. So OSU was the first project that we were involved in. Uh, it was primarily the advanced wood products facility where we did all the structural walls on the building. And then we also did the roof for PV Hall. Um, the next big feather in our cap was really the Portland Airport project in which we created a nine acre roof diaphragm for that, as well as a lot of the interior decorative pieces for the, uh, for the Portland Airport. Crowning achievement, I think, for a project at this period of time, because it, I think it it really shows that we're trying to address some of the societal ills out there, is the Oh Wow project in, in Oakland, California. It's a 19-story multifamily. I believe it's supposed to have somewhere like 276 um, housing units in it, and it's targeting the missing middle, so the people that can't afford the higher-end portions of, uh, of rent in, in California. Uh, but that project went up within three months, all 19 stories. The, uh, the contractor thinks that it actually shaved off about 35% of the cost compared to a typical concrete and steel building. So if that is the case, then we have pretty much checked all the boxes. We're using a environmentally sustainable material that sequesters carbon. We're creating a very valuable product for the consumers that can create a building at a much cheaper rate, much quicker, and uh, so it's, it's financially affordable. Wood products are the most sustainable, climate-friendly building materials on the planet. You know, and a lot of people forget the whole carbon cycle from their grade school education, right? But, you know, trees breathe in carbon dioxide. They take that carbon, they build up their cellular structure, and they breathe out oxygen. And we all need that. I mean, it's, it's what a healthy environment's all about. Well, trees are not only renewable, but they're recyclable, they're reusable, and my goodness, they're solar powered. And, you know, we can always replace, uh, replant our forest and turn it into that renewable resource that's available for future generations. You can't really do that with steel and concrete when you're uh, doing strip mines or digging big pits in the earth. Creating new, more efficient ways to use more of the tree is the name of the game. Now it's time, Ferris says, to get the courts out of the business of managing our forests. Last 30 years, there's just been relentless litigation from environmental groups. Um, there's been a constant attempt to drive down the, the potential to manage our forest in a real stewardship action. Instead, you know, we've essentially been managing our forest by uh, litigation, by judicial decree, as opposed to sound science. The federal government owns about 60% of the federal forest land, or of the forest land in Oregon. Um, if the federal government really decides that they need to go out there and mitigate their, their forest fire risk and create a healthier environment, then we're here to help. And we're, we're happy to, to buy timber sales 
that not only uh, accomplish stewardship goals, but also allow us the fiber to run our mills and to create the products, wood products of the future. Just this year, the Habitat Conservation Plan went into effect, limiting even more timber in Oregon for the market. So now, more timber will be shipped in from other parts of the world. How is that sustainable or good for the environment? But we have offset our, our own production here locally with wood imported from Russia, from China, from South America. And quite frankly, it doesn't do anyone or the environment any good to import wood like that. We're much better off to uh, manage our forests locally and then uh, create the products environmentally sustainably under our current environmental regulations so we know that we're, we're being sound with the environment than it is to allow China to run rampant in the wood products industry. The project that Freris is most proud of is the gymnasium his company helped build at Santa Am Canyon School District, right down the road from the mill. Many of these kids' parents work in the timber industry. The truth about timber is, now more than ever, Oregon needs this environmentally sustainable carbon storing product to meet the state's most desperate need, more affordable housing. We've got the same demand for, for wood products. Um, obviously, we've got a housing crisis, right? That in Oregon, they estimate that we need to build 140,000 housing units almost immediately in order to solve some of the affordability issues. Well, these things that, that reduce the availability for houses to be built out of lumber, sheathing products like walls, roofs, and floors, all that makes the houses more expensive and less available and doesn't do any good for the Oregon consumer.